Okay, so we are 10 seconds in. We should have sound now. So we're doing things a little differently today. Um, instead of using the usual uh, external camera to try and get a better view of things, we're using the main camera. However, I'm actually streaming the camera app on my phone to avoid the I have no color issue we've been coming across every time I try and use the camera normally. Um, so you're not going to see the little chat or the little thing down in the bottom corner that shows me, but you are actually going to see the colors on the ornaments I'm making. So I've already done two. These are just plain wooden ornaments that I got at Dollar Tree. Um, they come in a pack of like 10. Uh, or maybe it's not 10, but whatever. I got a bunch of them and they're made of wood and I'm just using colored pencils to color them. Uh, so this is a pumpkin, very full, and this is a leaf. Colors don't show quite as brightly there, but you can see the back is very plain compared to the front. Okay. Uh, eventually these are going to be strung up on a banner um, that will, you know, then hang. I haven't decided if it's going to hang in the front window, but not outside, or if it's going to hang. Um, I have just lost words. Or if it's actually going to hang outside. So, two, three, four. Okay, so they come in packs of five, I believe. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So there's five uh, pumpkins, one of which has been colored five owls, none of which have been colored. I don't know why owls were in the fall thing. I, they were probably meant for Halloween. And then five of the leaves, again, one of which has been colored. So, we're gonna... We're gonna start with another leaf. And this is probably gonna only be like an hour stream um, not a super long one. I also have a Christmas ornament, but I'm not ready for Christmas yet. So. I should have gotten what colors I'm using out first. Because I have discovered that I am really bad at telling what color is what. So. Like, I thought this was brown. It's actually raspberry. Uh. Funny thing is, I'm not even looking for brown. I'm technically looking for black. And I found outer space, which is a purpley black. Somewhere in here, there is a plain black. Somewhere. Maybe. Oh, maybe I just found it. Maybe I just found it. I really should have gotten out the colors I wanted to use first. Yes, black. Okay. So there's plain black now. I don't want all of my leaves and pumpkins to be the exact same colors as the others. So I'm going to grab a cup with some variety. So this is Coral Reef. It's a pinkish color. Uh, I'm going to use that on some of the leaves. Here we've got Heat Wave, which is an orange. Very bright, almost neon orange. Um, this is yellow orange. I think that's what I was using on the pumpkins last time. But we're just going to mix up some variety here. Uh, bronze yellow. Okay. So that'll be for a leaf. Um, I do want to kind of get a... Uh, it won't quite be a gradient but I do want to kind of go from this is shamrock that's a bit too bright a green I want a darker green that's raspberry again raspberry is not green it's pinky red dark pinky red so the first part of this stream is going to be my colorblind ass trying to find colors okay all of that's a green that's a dark green okay Okay, so I want to go dark green to a lighter green to a darker orange to a brighter orange to a pinkish color, but I want 
there to be a step between the dark, or the bright orange, and the pink. So let's see if I can find. Oh, it's just orange. I think I might need to take this one out because it kind of ruins my little gradient that I've got going. Yeah. Okay. And I want. brown. There's going to have to be a transition point between the brown and the pink. Um, this one is orange circuit. It's actually slightly darker. Orange. I'm getting way too many colors for one. That's raspberry again. I almost grabbed raspberry again. This is Harvest Gold. Yeah, I think that can go between, I think that can work for my brown. Okay. So stages of a dying leaf, as it were. Alright, we're going to start, though, with the black. Because I want to kind of mark out the veins and stuff. Probably not going to go quite as over the top as I did with the last one. Excuse you. Let's see if I can get a close in color. So I'm just doing a light line of the black. I'm going to go all the way down to the base of the leaf. And then I just realized you guys can't actually see the color because I'm not doing it brightly. So. We want those three to kind of meet at the same point. And then I'm going to radiate here and here. And again, we want that same point, even if it's not quite perfect. That's fine. We're not looking for perfection. We're looking for, could this logically be a leaf? seeing because I'm a doofus who keeps putting my hands in the way. But I'm adding some extra branching, extra veins. I said I wasn't going to go as ornate as the other one, but oh look, so I am. Because of course I am. Why wouldn't I? I'm an idiot. I always say I'm going to keep it simple and then I never do. Who knows why? I mean, I know why. You can only tell me to keep things simple so many times. It's not going to work. Okay, so I will now see if I can get this where y'all can see. Added on the veining on the leaf. So again, 
There's the back where I haven't done anything. And here's the front. Okay, now, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna start with the dark green. <clears throat> and we're gonna put this dark green down towards the base of the leaf. Um, not a ton of it either. And the reason why is if you think of a leaf and how it tends to die, um, the base is where it's going to get nutrients for the longest time before it actually dies. So we're going to give that base some extra color because it wasn't the point that died first. We'll go just a touch past these points and we're going to kind of, I don't want to go too far over uh, my black lines, but I definitely want okay so we started with that now we're going to switch to our bronze yellow and again not doing a ton. I'm not going to blend too much. We're just going to work outwards from this green. And some parts are going to get a bit more than others. orange first actually because we're going from like I said harvest yellow to this pumpkin shade so. again not a ton of blending not a ton of mixed colors we're just kind of I mean we're sort of blending but it's more of a gradient blend than a out a little bit further with the orange up into this area. Now we're going to swap to the orange circuit, which is hold on. I want the darkest orange to be right next to me. That's the fun thing about my color blindness. I can see colors. Um, it's just that certain colors I have a lot of trouble telling apart. Um, and like if you put two colors side by side, I can tell which one is which. But if you put me <clears throat> and just show me a color and you're like, hey, what color is this? I'm just going to kind of stare at it and go, uh, because I won't know. Like, the reason I can't tell where the black is or the browns or the colors I want in the box is because they're not sorted into a gradient. They are very randomized, frankly. Like, there's no rhyme or reason, if you ask me, to the way that they've got them put in there. Um, I'm sure that if you ask them, there's a reason, but I can't tell what it is. Okay. So. 
not doing a ton on that one. Alright, now we're moving on to the coral pink. Arit de Coral. Uh, maybe that's French, I don't know. And you can see, well, maybe you can't, um, that I'm coloring using the side instead of the tip. And the reason I'm doing that is. I want the colors to uh, go on much more smoothly. I don't want some lines to be thicker than others for the most part. Um, with the black it was fine, but here I don't want that. So, alright, the last one is this bronze. And now I'm going to come back down here. And what I'm going to do is, I am using the tip here for the stem. Because I want the most intense color I can get there. And then, I'm going to come back. I'm going to use the green that I was using earlier. And I'm like going to go over that lightly. to give me a more <clears throat> earthy tone. Now, let's see if I can, yeah, that, you can kind of see the differences in colors. And again, there's the back where it has no coloring versus the front where you can see there's definitely colors. Now, I want to go over this slightly. This is where, oh, that's a good color. Why couldn't I find this earlier? Uh, khaki. We're going to go over all of it lightly with the khaki. And the reason for this is I'm just kind of mingling the colors just a little bit. Because you rarely see a leaf that is all, you know, done in bands, things like that. No, you see leaves that have kind of a patchy appearance. So we're just kind of muddying the waters a little, as it were. Um, making it so that everything is kind of imperfect. Nature is beautiful, but it is definitely not perfect. Okay, that's that's a bit better. Definitely need a new camera or a better camera. Okay, so that's two of our leaves colored. Let's go ahead and do a pumpkin. Now, I don't want the pumpkin to be um, just the exact same as the other. So, I'm going to do it slightly differently. I'm going to do the ribs of it, and then I'm going to maybe mess with gradient a bit. So, we start... Pumpkins have kind of curved ribs, so... I'm going to start on either side of the stem and come down with curved lines. Now, we're going to make the next line... outwards and then we're only going to do one more rib out here we don't want to overwhelm things you know so here's our really it fell to a spot I can't reach without moving. There we go. 
<clears throat> if y'all have noticed, I have very big shoulders, and I literally could not reach the, uh, I could not fit my shoulder between the desk and the chair to reach down to where the uh, thing had fallen. Okay, let's try this again. Now, you can see, again, blank versus that. All right, now for our coloration. Um, like I said, I did pretty much the entirety of the last pumpkin in this yellow-orange. So we're going to do, let's do a darker pumpkin with some lighter patches. So we're going to start with just plain orange. And Now anyone who has gone to a pumpkin patch will know pumpkins are not uniform color. Um, they're not uniform shape either, but everyone forgets that. Um, they tend to have spots where it's, you know, flatter because that was the spot that was on the ground. They have spots that are uh, darker because that was the spot that <clears throat> uh, got the most sun, you know, So you really don't see just a pumpkin. Um, you're seeing the effects of wind and weather and, you know, nature on this pumpkin. So I'm leaving some spots bare, and I'm going to come back and do those in a different shade of orange. And to emulate that more natural appearance. I mean, we're going to get variations anyway, just because of how the wood grain affects the colored pencil. But that's good. We want variations. Because, again, we're trying for something that is more natural in appearance. Right, we're going to use the circuit orange on some parts that got less color. or didn't get colored at all. And then... I'm gonna come around these edges and hit them with the circuit orange. going to do a similar thing to what we did with the leaf. Make sure we hold that we did. Just making certain that I get all of these edges because the edges don't like to pick up the color quite as well. Okay. We're going to do something similar to what I did with the leaf. Um, only instead of using khaki, we're going to use this harvest gold. And then again, we're going to go over the stem with the darker green. And I'm going to use mostly the tip here. Um, still using the side of it instead of like this way. Uh, but. It's still primarily the tip. Now, 
again we're going to go over this with the green and in this case we're going to use the green to give it a bit of definition and make it look like an actual stem then because if you get a really good pumpkin um, like from a pumpkin farm it'll actually have part of the stem still attached or part of the vine still attached and that's where you get the ones that have that cute little curl on them because pumpkin vines at certain points are curled so here we go. Let's see if I can find the right angle to give you guys the light. You can see you've got points that are darker orange, lighter orange, and you can see that stem. Okay. So there's two pumpkins and two leaves done. Uh, of course, like I said, one of them, you guys saw me do, one you did not. Let's go ahead, I have not done any of the owls, so we're going to go ahead and do the owl. Now, the owls are not built like actual owls. Just letting you know. Um, like, they're, they're built like, frankly, it looks a lot like the Duolingo owl. Um... But we're going to give it definition to the wings. We're not going to close the wings because they are attached to the body. Therefore, they would not be separate from. We're going to give it the roundish belly. This is going to be a very cartoony owl. Um, I'm going to give it a beak. Owl beaks are very odd, just so you know. They're not... They're not nearly so defined as... Uh, as you might think. Because there's actually a lot of loof around them. They're actually much longer than you think. And we're just gonna This one might be for Halloween. Um, Cause uh, it's got a very spooky big eyes look to it. We'll see. Um, now the eyes of the owl themselves. Are actually not. They're just very well oriented for spotting uh, prey. We're going to go ahead and use the khaki for the lighter part of the owl, so the belly. The important thing with all of this is that you're having fun doing it. So, you know, don't worry if yours turns out a little wonky. Mine is too. Um, this is just, you know, a way to enjoy the creative process. Um, and it's cheap and easy. 
You know, you don't actually need the massive thing of colored pencils like I have. You can use just, you know, a regular 6 or 12 pack that you can get, again, at the dollar store. Um, I just happen to have large amounts of colored pencils because I um, have definitely had periods where I had more or less money. And during at least one of those periods where I had more, I went ahead and got the big pack of colored pencils because I wanted it for a long time. Okay, we're actually going to... We're actually going to have to pick up our uh, box again because I'm looking for a specific color or non-color in this case. White. Yes. And then I want a dark brown. Are you a dark brown or are you another shade of red? You are another shade of red. Okay. Well, pink actually, I think. Stop. Mahogany is brown, right? It's quite a bit red brown. Not what I'm looking for. It might be useful on the next leaf. Brown. Took me two tries. Uh, well, actually, quite a few tries. I just didn't actually pull them all the way around. Out oh, at the very end. Okay, so brown. And then I want the white. I'm going to do the white around the eyes. The black's not going to show at all. I can deal with it. So instead, let me use this mahogany and come outwards from the belly. Careful on the beak. We don't want to color over the beak, because that's going to be a different color when we reach that point. Well, now y'all are in the way. I don't know why my phone keeps making noises. I wish it wouldn't. Somebody probably sent me a text message or something. And it's probably, like, something I don't want to deal with anyway. Text message saying, hey, by the way, you've got this bill that's due. And I'm like, no, I just paid that this weekend. Because that's a thing that happens. Now, owl legs actually have a lot of feathering down onto the leg itself. Um, really, you know, they, they have feathers all the way down. Except for the very, actually, the far now. Uh, certain owls, like the snowy owl, have it all the way to the feet itself. But we're not gonna, this is obviously not a snowy owl, otherwise it'd be white. So we're not gonna do that. But we're definitely going to extend out the body a little bit with this mahogany. say it's quite spooky, but those those huge eyes are definitely uh, kind of creepy. This one, we're going to kind of blend a little bit into that mahogany. I 
I just basically colored over it. And go ahead and do the wings. good of the wood grain is it actually almost kind of gives it a feathery appearance um, because of course the wood grain isn't going to be perfectly connected I don't know why but this those eyes I just have to figure out something to do with those eyes that's a big thing We're going to use the same khaki that we used for the belly around the eyes. That might make them a bit less horrifying looking, creepy looking. A lot of that massive dish-faced owl look, by the way, is not the owl itself. Um, or not the eyes themselves. They're actually... The feathers are shaped in a way to help direct sound towards the ears. Um, use the harvest gold. And we're going to use the tip to make it nice and deep. But there's our beak. Right here. One foot. steroids. <laughs> eh, it'll work. Okay. So, let's... Let's try a somewhat more natural looking owl. So, we're not gonna... Def well, we're still gonna define the wings, but they're not gonna be quite the same. They're gonna be actually... going to be a bit more natural looking. We're going to go with the brown again. I think this time I'm going to do the brown first and then move into the areas with lighter coloration. And along with that, not going to be doing as many different areas of color. It's mostly going to be brown. Those things on top of an owl's head, by the way, that lots of people assume are ears, they're not. They're just feathers. Sorry to burst people's bubbles, but no, owls don't have, like, cat ears.
and I mean, don't get me wrong, I've got a uh, very anatomically incorrect owl uh, skeleton, you know, the, the plastic skeletons, that has those bone uh, protrusions that are not actually ears. They're, they're completely not ears, actually. They're uh, just feathers. I'm not quite certain what those feathers do, but yeah. Um, for anyone who thinks that those are ears, sorry, no, not the case. Their ears are completely invisible to us. Um, Try and emulate that same darker brown that we got entirely on accident because of wood graining. more natural looking owl. Yeah. Let's see. Let's do another leaf. And now that we've got the brown, this will actually be a bit more of a natural looking leaf. Again, we're going to use the black first just to give us our veins. Thankfully, we don't have to worry about perfection because, uh, nope.
natural world isn't perfect, so why should we accept why should we expect that we will be? You know? <clears throat> We're gonna first use brown right here for the stem. And this leaf is only actually going to have three colors, so. I'm going to start with the Harvest Gold. gold along the edges of the veins and then build out from there. So instead of having quite the definition that the other leaf did where there were bands of color and the bands worked upwards from the uh, base of the leaf. This time we're just going to follow the veining. Squeaking about some TV show that just got a uh, update or new season, I guess. New season just dropped for it. They are both very, very happy about this, but one more so than the other. I'm going to finish up this leaf, and once we're all done with it, we'll go ahead and end the stream. Um, not that I don't enjoy spending time with y'all, but I uh, 
haven't eaten since before I went to bed. And I went to bed about 12 hours ago. So yeah, it might be time for me to go and put some food in me. But first, finishing the leaf. Because you all know me. It might take a while, but I like to start what I finish. Or, well, the other one's fitting too. Uh, but I like to finish what I start if I can. just lightly go in around those edges. made more pear butter yesterday. I'm now up to three and just under a just a touch under a half quart. So and I have still like six bags of pears to go. Some of them are in the freezer. Um, I think I mentioned that I was hoping to do a double batch and couldn't because um, four pounds of pears pretty much takes up the entirety of the crock pot. So the reason, by the way, that I am doing the, uh, the lighter brown even though, and I'm doing all of the areas with the lighter brown, even though I know I'm just going to come back and go over with the darker brown in a lot of these areas, is in the event that I, uh, while doing the darker brown, like, miss an area, there'll still be color there because it'll have the lighter brown. don't want perfection. Perfection is never my goal. Start moving 
moving inward, but not a ton. We still want that lighter central area. And I've actually lessened the amount of pressure I'm putting on the, the pencil. Which means I'm getting a lighter coverage too. looking so let's show all three together if I can Switching hands, maybe. Nope, not switching hands. Alright, we're gonna do this one. Trying to get it as natural a look as I can, but um, that's always going to be questionable. Let's just face it. That. Right. That said, we're pretty much at an hour, and that was about as far as I wanted to go. So I do want to thank those who came out to join the stream tonight. I hope you had fun watching. I know I had fun doing the coloring. Um, I'm going to keep doing these, and maybe later I'll show you the actual finished banner once it is finished. Otherwise, though, I hope you guys had a lot of fun. I hope that you guys have a great haul, uh, fall. Happy holidays that are upcoming, because there's a lot of them. I'm going to continue to try and maintain my stream as much as possible, but recognize that time can be limited, uh, especially with you know the fact that I've got family and holidays and so there's going to be a lot going on in the next couple months month or two um, so I'm going to do the best I can to maintain my stream but there might be some that we miss but for right now thank you guys so much again for coming out I hope that you have a beautiful re rest of your week take care of yourself take care of each other and I'll see you next week on the crafting or on the uh, gaming stream, and then the crafting stream after.